Hey guys, Jodie here back with you for another furniture painting tutorial and stay tuned as I show you how to get the perfect colourful grungy look. Alright, so I'm going to get started on this pine bureau behind me. Um, I'm not a massive, massive fan of, of, uh, of pine furniture, if I'm being totally honest. Um, so I'm going to paint it. It's in really good condition, to be fair, but I still want a really textured look with it. So I don't have any clear cups today, so I'm just going to use this little bowl and I'm going to use sea spray because you guys know how much I love sea spray. And I also have some Pure Ocean because you know how much I love my blues as well. So I'm just going to have a little play. I don't really know where I want to go with this. All I know is that I'm in the mood for some colour and I don't really want to follow any set plan. I just want to have a little bit of a play. So let's just see what happens with this. Okay, so I'm going to take one scoop of sea spray and pop it in my little plant pot <laughs> like that. And you roughly want to mix four ounces of paint to one scoop of sea spray but that is not a hard and fast rule you can just kind of do it however you want and I think I might want this quite textured today so what I might do is this is what I'm thinking is I'm going to come in and just do my sea spray as usual not have it overly textured but then I may apply some extra sea spray in some areas afterwards okay and now I have my pure ocean and I'm not going to measure I'm just kind of just going to pour that in there if you're a baker or a cook or something, I personally am not, <laughs> but if you are, it's kind of similar in that you kind of just start to get used to what the consistency should be like of the batter and things like that, and it's kind of the same with this. You just kind of get to know what consistency that you like. And this is the consistency I'm going for today, so it's a little bit, as you can see, there we go. And I'm using a Le Petit brush and I'm going to stipple it on with this. And the reason why I'm using a Le Petit brush today and not the Best Dang brush are the um, chip brushes that I normally use. Because this has a different kind of edge to it, it's a little bit pointed and but also a little bit round, it's going to uh, create some different brush strokes and texture. So as I stipple, I am not using any water at all. I want to keep as much texture as I possibly can. And I just want there to be really, really good coverage. So I don't really want much of the wood showing through once I'm done with this base layer. And also what I decided in the end was that I allowed different pockets of texture. So sometimes I went in a little bit more heavy handed with the sea spray and other times I went in a little bit thinner just to get some very grungy texture. And as always guys, all of the products I use today are listed down below and you can also grab your products through the links below and that just helps out my channel a little bit and I always appreciate it. Okay, so this is pretty much dry. So I'm just going to go in now with some white wax, this is Best Dang Wax in White and because this is water based it means that I can put water based paint all over the top of it. Okay, I get why some of you might be wondering why I'm putting white wax on now um, if I'm not wanting to seal it, but what this will do is when I go over the top with watery paint layers is that it will just soften the paint a little bit that I put over the top and also separate it a little bit as well. So um, again, it just means that I can create layers and layers and create different textures and things um, and it's just going to alter the end look. I'm applying the wax on quite thick with a chip brush so that it gets in all the texture and then I'm wiping off any excess before I go in with any paint. Okay, so next up I have Dixie Bell's Plum Crazy, which I'm just pouring into a jug and I'm also diluting with water. It's probably my usual mixture, I don't really measure, but it would have been around a 50-50 solution of paint to water and then I'm just giving it a good stir and as you can see it is quite drippy. So I'm just going to get straight in there and start applying that over the wax just with a chip brush, nothing special and I'm spraying this also as I go along and then patting with an old rag. You can also use old kitchen towels, you can use anything really as long as it's lint free 
and yeah so I'm just applying it all over and then tapping and spraying and that is just because I want to build up the plum crazy randomly in some areas and I want to set it to settle in you know in some of the texture and I want it to be thicker in some areas and it's going to look like a crazy up mess but I promise it will all come together in the end. Just as I did with the Plum Crazy, I also diluted down some kernel mustard, but I didn't use a chip brush this time. I actually used the oval medium brush and I actually used a little bit less water because I wanted the kernel mustard to be a little bit thicker and a little bit stronger because obviously it needs to kind of, needs to hold its own over the blue and pink, especially as it's yellow. Um, and the reason why I'm using the oval medium brush is because it just means that I can apply more on and I'm using, using different brush strokes in different directions. Um, um, and also, I am not brushing so that there's full coverage. So as you can see, I'm also leaving little pockets that aren't covered in the yellow at all. So then as I'm going along I am working in sections and then I start to spray um, and this is called wet distressing where you spray paint and then you know the paint starts to remove it is it's a way of distressing so I'm allowing some of the coats of paint underneath to shine through um, I'm also brushing some of the watered down paint because this is not going to be a smooth or an even look at by any means if you want to get a grungy look then you need different pockets of texture you need different pockets of color and um, just for it to look authentic so don't be scared just to have a really good play Also, because there's white wax underneath, it will dry a lot softer as well. So white wax is fantastic for bringing colours together. And because we've got that underneath the Plum Crazy and the Kernel Mustard, what that means is that the colours will dry much, much softer and not as bold and will look a lot more, I guess, natural. Also, when painting a grungy look like this, you've got to be comfortable with being uncomfortable for a while and you just have to trust the process and trust that it's all going to come together in the end because it will, will definitely look like a crazy hot mess for a while and you've just got to trust in yourself that you will get there. Okay, so here you can see now how the white wax has altered the overall colour of that paint. I haven't done anything there, it is just what the white wax has done to the paint and now I'm coming in with some Best Dang Wax in Black. I am using a fresh Le Petit brush because they are my favourite go-to brushes to use for waxing. Um, I haven't put any wax underneath at all, sometimes you can use clear wax before you go in with the decorative waxes, but I really really want a lot of black wax on this so I'm going in there thick and heavy with it and I am applying it everywhere. Because the wax is water based what this then means is that I can get my rag, I can dampen it, you know, wet it a little bit and then I can remove the wax that way. Um, so you don't necessarily have to go in with a clear wax first to erase the wax because that is also one thing you can do. You can go in there with a the clear wax, add your decorative wax and then um, use clear wax to remove it but because the Best Dang Wax range are water based you can actually use water to remove and soften it as well. I recommend leaving the wax to dry for 15 minutes or sometimes even overnight can be good and that way you give the furniture the chance to soak in all the wax um, and then remove any excess afterwards. So the wax will harden, even the dark waxes they will harden and protect the piece, they will protect the paint finish, however if there's any excess sitting on top there's only so much that the furniture can soak in so you want to make sure that excess is then removed after the furniture is soaked as much as it possibly can.
And here's the finished look. So I feel like I've really gone back to my roots with this one because I was all about the grungy looks when I started and I absolutely love doing a bit of a, you know, moody kind of finish. So um, I appreciate it's not for everybody, but I definitely love it. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments. And as always, guys, happy painting and bye-bye.